Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you thank the Lord for his promise and his promises? Lord, we just, we bless your name, Jesus. And we give you honor, Lord. You're so mighty. We thank you for your promises, God. We thank you, God. You only respect promises. You only respect promises. Hallelujah. So God, help us, God, to get on one of those promises and stand on it and don't move off of it. For we have these great promises. They are exceedingly, they are many, and we are standing on one right now. God, we're standing on a promise. Uh, we're standing on a promise that you're going to do it. Uh, we're standing on the promise that you're for us. Uh, we're standing on the promise that you want your church on fire. Uh, God, uh, we're on fire for you, God. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your promises. Hey, hey, hey. I'm a product of a promise. Oh, somebody, I'm only here because of a promise. And I'm still standing on it. I'm not going to get off of it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for your promise. Thank you for your outstretched hand of mercy. Heke yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! Well, we have a long way to go this morning. If we could just dive right in it, we'll get some more of his promises. Amen. There are over 3,000 and something promises in the Bible. There's probably enough to give everybody in here at least two. You know what one promise can do. <laughs> Hallelujah. You might leave here with two today. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're speaking my language right now. You know, I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I'm, I'm on fire. Just got back from Uganda and Ethiopia. <laughs> And, and, and this church, tell somebody, this church has launched a revival. We have launched, I'm talking to you, Lighthouse. Uh, we have launched a revival in another country. God has given us a country. We should have never let him go to Uganda. He done lost his mind for Jesus. That brother's on fire. He's giving us a country, brother. <laughs> As I speak right now, they are going around the country baptizing people in the name of Jesus. Over 440 people got filled with the Holy Ghost that had never spoken tongues before and now they can't stop. 84 got baptized in the name of Jesus. I have a list here of at least 15 miracles. If you would just let me get to some of them today, I'll give them to you. I promise you, I'll give them to you. At least 15 15 notable miracles in four days. Church, it's one thing to hear about revival. It's another thing to see a revival. But Lighthouse is the birth canal of the revival. Do you understand?
have birthed the revival? No wonder God is blessing this church in our 25th year. It took 25 years, but we kept praying. We kept fasting. We kept believing. And God has given us a country. I dare you to get on that airplane with us one day. Hallelujah. We're going back in July for the Jesus Festival. I guess I better just share the video and do my thank yous to everyone that prayed and, and all of that. Amen. Can we do the, the video? Are y'all ready with the video? God bless you, church. You may be seated. And while they're getting that ready, I just wanted to thank, of course, our awesome leaders, Pastor and Sister Delgado. Amen. It'll break me to tears if I just keep talking about them. So, and we won't get anywhere today. I need, we need to finish this. But thank you, Pastor and Sister Delgado, Pastor and Sister Lane, and the, the group that came from uh, Pastor Lane's church and ministry, Liberty Global, uh, Liberty Tabernacle, his church where he pastors. We took them at, on our pastor's advice. He said, take them to Uganda and watch what God does. I uh, want to thank Pastor and Sister Crump from All Nations Church in Oklahoma. They have contributed to the mission. Of, it required finances and different things. And they have blessed Bethany and installed showers and toilets at the orphanage and all that. I mean, it just, I mean, <laughs> we'll be here all day. Um, and then one second. And then I just want to thank Pastor Benny from Morning Star Church. They you know, fix the well when we installed the well there so they could have running water and, um, and then the well start getting dirt in it. And then another church in Oakland, they say, well, let us fix the well. Hallelujah. So we let them do that. Yeah. Deacon Ferguson, uh, one of the trustees there, he sent, he blessed Bethany with so much that, that they could add to what they're doing there. Brother and sister Jose and his family. Amen. They his wife, you just gave up her husband and kids. Thank you for letting that brother go to Uganda. That was just amazing. He blessed me so much. He started Bible studying the people cleaning his room. And then they start coming to the services. Hallelujah. The brother baptized a man he was playing basketball with at one of the services. Come on now. Oh, my goodness. We started a revival. We ain't just in one. That's powerful. But we have launched it. We're a church on fire. Tell somebody, they say, where you go to church? Yeah, I go to this church on fire, brother. That's where I go. I go to a church on fire. I, I, I go to a church on fire because God wants his church on fire. I'll prove it to you in a few minutes few more pastors pastor in Ethiopia we flew from Uganda to Ethiopia want to bless those pastors pastor Dessa he's our bishop over there and got to pray and minister to those 40 pastors and I just want to say thank you also to the lighthouse family for contributing any kind of way you did prayer finances or what have you thank you thank you on behalf of my wife my family our ministry thank you we're one ministry, amen. We are just lighthouse. I mean, tell somebody, we're just lighthouse. <laughs> we're lighthouse. And we're on fire. In Jesus' name. Ready with the video? All right. Yeah. 
That was after a miracle just happened right there. We were getting ready to baptize some folks, but the water truck didn't show up. So it immediately started raining and all the men grabbed the trash cans and buckets and the tent and used the tent to pour the rainwater into the baptism tank and it filled up in 15 minutes and we start baptizing in Jesus the miracle rain right there right there that's where it happened at watch them started raining right there there was no ceiling on the church. Them all pastors and saints. And it started raining. And there was there was no ceiling. Holy Ghost fell. A bunch of folks caught the Holy Ghost right there. Watch this. Then it started raining through the building. And they started pouring water out the trash cans right there. And that was the first brother we baptized. One of my sons. Miracle rain water. That was miracle water. And then it stopped raining. Woo! We was baptizing day and night. Hallelujah. 
STEM now. They're going around the country baptizing in Jesus' name. Why don't you stand with me in Jesus' name? Go to the book of Revelations. We're going to the book of Revelations. Hallelujah. And I want us to look at Chapter 3. In Jesus' name. Amen. And look around verse 14 if you have it, say amen. Also, I want to thank the Kayas, Pastor and Sister Kaya. That's our host pastor there. He's our key man in his church, Grace and Truth. We just want to remember them in prayer because... Uh, many of those things happened because he was open to the apostles' doctrine. He was open to what we were preaching and teaching. And then he turned right around and began to preach it to his colleagues like I have never heard it before because they weren't baptizing in Jesus' name. They weren't doing any of that. They was just confessing and calling Lord Jesus and all that. And, you know, some called the sinner's prayer, and we know that ain't even in the Bible. And so, in the next thing you know, now they're going around with what we have lit down there from the scriptures. The apostles' doctrine. Acts chapter 241 said that after they believed what the apostles preached, they went and started going from house to house. And many signs, wonders, and miracles were done as a result of it. Amen. That's what's happening down there now, church. If I were you, I'd, I'd be fired up. Amen. Because a part of what you have contributed in prayer or whatever has ignited a country. God has given us a country. Those folks are on fire. Over 140 pastors? You can't even get 20 pastors together in America. Those folks received the doctrine, saw it in scripture, and now they're running with it. In Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 3, looking at verse 14, it says, Unto the angel of the church at Laodicea, write these things, saith the Amen, or saith Jesus, because that's another name for Jesus. The faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold or hot. I would that you were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Or literally means I will vomit you out of my stomach. That word mouth is stomach or mit. Because thou art rich and increased in goods and have no need of these things. And knowing not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me. Gold tried in the fire, and thou, that thou may be as rich and white raiment, and thou mayest be clothed, and that thy shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. I want you to pray with me to church. Pray with me today. I want to speak to you today about this. God wants his church on fire. We see it in scripture. Why don't you pray with me? Father God, right now, we just bless you. We honor you. We thank you for your gracious mercy, God. We thank you for your spirit, Lord. We thank you for all that you do, God, all that you have done, Lord. We thank you, God, for you, your carrying grace of mercy, Lord. Lord, you guided us, oh Lord, through many airports and, and all these nations, God, and allowed us, oh God, to sit down in Uganda, Lord. And now you're birthing something there, Lord. We were able to impact the leaders and impact Impacting the leaders, we will impact the country now, and they will impact their congregations. Lord, we pray for every one of them. Lord, we pray for all those churches that were involved, those that opened their door for the first time, God, those that didn't even really know much about us, oh Lord, but they decided to take a chance, oh Lord. Will you bless them, Lord? Many of them now believe in it was a divine visitation. They believe it was God 
God's hand involved in it. And Lord, you sent us, oh Lord. But who are we, God? We're just planters, oh Lord. And we're just waterers, oh God. And you said in the scriptures, planters and waterers are all we really have. And you said, but they are nothing. We are nothing, God. And only with you are we something, God. For our sufficiency is in you, God, and not above ourselves, the apostle Paul says. So Lord Jesus, will you anoint those folks, God? Give them what they're going to need, Lord, huh, as we're going to stand with them, huh, as we're going to move into the country and begin to build with them, Lord. Huh. We're going to purchase property down there. Huh. We're going to set up churches there. We're going to set up a medical missions there. Huh. We're going to set up some stuff there that they're going to wonder how in the world did that little church do it. Huh. We're going to do it because if the Lord be for us, huh, who could be against us? Huh. God, will you help us, oh Lord, huh, because we're going to need things, oh Lord. Give us vision for this thing. Give us vision for the revival. We started it, God. We can't leave them hanging. Lord, let them know, God, that they have a support system coming their way. They can expect to see something more than just preaching to them. But, Lord, we're going to go down there, Lord, and help with jobs. If nobody will, I'll do it by myself. Father, will you help us as a church? Bind together and get a hold of your vision because you want your church on fire. You said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Oh, Lord, I pray for your church this morning in Jesus' name. Why don't you thank the Lord with me in Jesus' name? Amen. As you're seated. Just to mention a few miracles that we witnessed while we were there. One, we had a police escort because the traffic is so bad in the country that when they picked us up from the airport, one of the two miracles was a police escort escorting us through the country in these incredible diplomat vehicles. Now, I know the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, you're a new creature. Behold, old things are passed away. All things become new. It goes on to say that we are ambassadors of Christ, amen. And as an ambassador of Christ, uh, they picked us up at the airport, an ambassador vehicle. That just doesn't happen, amen. That was another one of the miracles. Uh, I kept looking at the police escort while they was leading us through traffic. I was like, what the, what? the police leading us through traffic while we were on our way going to these different cities and evangelizing. It was just powerful. Tells them my health powerful. Amen. Another one of the miracles is in the one of the first days we had seen 76 people get filled with the Holy Ghost at our host pastor's church. Imagine seeing most of the people in your church get the Holy Ghost. That just doesn't happen, church. Understand what I'm saying? I've seen a whole choir get the Holy Ghost. Have you ever seen that? Miracle. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know sometimes the music missing, you wish they had the Holy Ghost. Because some of them be acting like they ain't got the Holy Ghost. I got to see a whole choir get the Holy Ghost. Miracle. Another one of the miracles I, I thought was incredible. And one day they fed about 500 people. In the daytime we had tents. We was doing services in the tents. And then at night we would have these huge evangelistic services with the stage and the lights and everything. But when it came time for lunch, I don't know how they fed 500 people out of three pots. Maybe some of you cooks understand it, but I don't know how they fed 500 people out of three pots. <laughs> Miracle. Hallelujah. Another one of the miracles is while we were in far in the countryside, we had armed security to watch over us while we were sleeping at night. With AK-47s. Hallelujah. <laughs> Man, all we needed was one of them, and I felt safe, amen. We had armed security watching over us at night while we are asleep. I'm talking about we way out in the wilderness somewhere. We don't even know how to get home. Wouldn't you like to have some security? God blessed us, church. Blessed us. Amen. 
The miracle rain already told you about that. You had to be there. Everybody was getting wet in their church clothes. Uh, there was no ceiling on the church where we were pastoring and preaching and teaching. And if while it started raining, it started raining through the ceiling. It knocked out the sound system. One of the, my sons, he's a music minister out there somewhere. He ran up and, and just started a cappella and said, let's worship God right now. And the whole place ignited. Everybody came to the altar, pouring down, raining on us in the church. You know how many folks say, I want my umbrella. I ain't got no umbrella. I got to go. Them people start dancing in the rain at the altar because the altar was red hot. There was on fire. This is a true story. Oh, I'm trying to tell you. He wants his church on fire. He said, I would rather you be hot or cold. I'll vomit you out. And we know that the church lighthouse is on fire. Let's go a little further. Another miracle is we wind up on television um, teaching. Pastor Lane and I both did two separate television shows. i like to send out another thank you to UBC, Uganda Broadcast Channel, and Big Sam, who hosts the show, The Gospel Hype. Uh, I want to thank you, Big Sam, for believing and allowing us to come on in there and teach and put us on national TV. Let us preach our message. Let us preach our word. Let us preach our doctrine. Let us preach the oneness. Let us preach Jesus' name, baptism. Let us preach the only one God, the only one name, the covenant name. And then they was like, well, you... Will you come back and stay a whole day? We, we need you on about eight episodes. I'll be like, yeah, I'll be back in July, brother. Don't you worry about it. Amen. We're going back in July. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and, and you know me, I don't take offerings. <laughs> I am an offering, aren't you? Aren't you an offering? We're offerings. I never took an offering of them three times. We didn't been over there in, in 12 months. And I think I'm almost at 20,000 of my own money just going. So what? We are offering. He said, you're supposed to be broken bread and poured out wine. You and I, we're supposed to be willing to do whatever it's going to take to win the loss, to reach soul. Can somebody say hallelujah? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Also, spent a couple of days in another town just riding on them big, beautiful buses. <laughs> Hallelujah. Under that air condition, it was just incredible. Another miracle, we saw five evil spirits cast out of these five individuals. And then God filled them with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was falling so strong on one of the services that at the same time, many people there got the Holy Ghost. Nobody ever touched them. When the Holy Ghost fell and people start getting filled with the Holy Ghost, evil spirits start jumping out of people at the same time. And so it was like the Holy Ghost people was moving to the right. And the spirits that was jumping out of people had folks on the ground rolling to the left. It was amazing. You just saw the whole crowd bust. I say, what's going on? And I look and I saw the evil spirit people went that way. People got the Holy Ghost went that way. But later on, we prayed for them that night. And by the time the devil start coming out of them folks, and, and then we baptized them in Jesus' name, there was no lights out there, so we had to use a car. And so we start baptizing them. They showed up the next night in right mind. They showed up the next night clear in their right mind. Even their own people ain't never seen them like that. Because that is the covenant name. That's the name that breaks. There's no other name given under heaven where men must be saved. According to Acts 4.12. And that is the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. More uh, miracles. Just It was just so many. I mean, you know, it was just a blessing. Amen. Let's get back to Jesus wants his church on fire. Hallelujah. The Bible tells me in Matthew chapter 16. Jesus had approached Peter and his disciples and he said, who do men say that I am? And then they, Peter stepped up and he was the one that said, well, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. 
He goes on to tell Peter, Peter, flesh and blood haven't revealed that, that to you. Only my father could have revealed that to you. He goes on to tell Peter, he said, Peter, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. But he goes on to tell Peter, he said, my church, Peter, my church church the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church you need to be in the church if you know anybody that ain't you need to get next to them and start talking to them about it because there ain't no help outside of the church the gates of hell can knock down wall street the gates of hell can knock down google the gates of hell can tear down facebook but according to that bible the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church the bible tells me in ephesians he said when we were outside of christ we had no hope outside of jesus there is no hope you need to be in the church if i was you i'd stop missing church The gates of hell will prevail against you. Only one thing it cannot prevail against. That's the church. According to Jesus, I love the church. I'm sticking with the church. You can't talk me out the church. Amen. The church is supposed to be on fire. Fire with faith. Fire with love, fire with peace, fire with meekness, fire with gentleness, fire with long suffering, fire with everything he handed us uh, through the gifts of the spirit, through the uh, fruit of the spirit. Uh, we supposed to be on fire. Oh, somebody, I will not stop. According to 1 Peter 2 and 9, the Bible tells us that we are a royal priesthood. We are a royal priesthood. I left the neighborhood and wound up in the priesthood. He said, you are a royal priesthood. You are a royal priesthood. You're kings now. That's what the Bible tells us. Now, and this is powerful to me because after the law ended and the church began, he never stopped the priesthood. We are a royal priesthood. And the number one duty of a priest, according to Leviticus chapter 6, verses 8 through 13, the priest's job number one is to never let the fire go out. That's your number one responsibility. I can't put fire in you. You can't put fire in me. It is your job. It's your assignment as a priest to never let your fire go out. That's my duty. So I don't care if you can run, walk, or hop over the pews. Wherever you at, you got to kindle that thing again you gotta stir it up again you gotta kick it back in motion you better get you some matches some dura flame or whatever you gotta get and say i gotta get my fire back kicking again that is my responsibility it ain't the pastor's responsibility it ain't your denomination's responsibility. It's the priesthood responsibility. And priesthood means you can't be by yourself. That's why it's called a priesthood. <laughs> Tell somebody I'm in the hood. <laughs> the priesthood. He never intended for you to try and do this thing by yourself. That's why he had 24 orders of priests. And they all needed to connect with each other sometime. Amen. They all had a duty. And the number one duty was to not let the fire of the offering and the altar to go out. 
Tell somebody he wants his church on fire. As a priest and a royal priesthood, the Bible says we're designed to offer up praises. You don't want to offer up a praise with no fire. You don't want to offer up a song with no fire. Amazing grace. How sweet the No, where is your fire? You got to kindle that thing back up. You got to get it back started. You got to get it back going. Amen. As a royal priest, everybody, every Christian in the New Testament is a royal priest. And it's your responsibility, it's your duty to kindle that fire back up again. Tell somebody, praise the Lord. Uh, you don't want to smell like smoke. You want to smell like fire. In Daniel chapter 3, verses 25 and 26, when they threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, what happened? They looked in the fire, and they weren't consumed. They looked in the fire, and they said, didn't we just throw three people in there? I see it looked like somebody in there called the son of man, and he ain't allowing them to get burned up. Because he wants his church to stay on fire. <laughs> when you read Daniel chapter 3, when Nebuchadnezzar came, he says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out the fire. <laughs> Can I help you about fire? See, we usually only see fire as just judgment. Or we'll see fire as this. Or we'll see fire as that. The number one purpose of fire was so that you can meet with God. The number one purpose of fire in the Bible is so you can go and meet with God. Moses turned and looked and saw the bush it was burning, but it wasn't consumed. He said, Moses, take off your shoes because now you finna learn my name and you finna learn how to approach me. You about to come and I'm gonna introduce you to what's called worship. So you can't lose your fire. If you lose your fire, then your worship's broke. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, you can't lose your fire. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, he said, take off your shoes, Moses. Uh, I'm going to teach you why the bush is, isn't consumed. Uh, that bush is not consumed uh, because I want you to have what's in that bush. Uh, I want you to burn like the bush, baby. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, I want my fire back. <laughs> Jesus' name. He wants his church on fire. Bible tells me in Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 and 12 John the Baptist speaking John the Baptist said I truly baptize you with water unto repentance but the one that's coming after me is mightier than I I'm not even able to unloose his sandals he said he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire I dare the husbands to start getting on fire around here like never before. I dare the wives around here to start getting on fire like never before. I dare the single folks around here start getting on fire like never before. You're going to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning and you're going to be in there burning something. The husband going to say, baby, you cooking some eggs? No, I ain't cooking no eggs. I'm in here worshiping right now. I'm in here worshiping right now. What you smell is worship. Hey, yeah, but what you smell is worship. That's what you smell. You smell worship. I wake up sometime four or five o'clock in the morning. My wife in there cooking, and it ain't breakfast. <laughs> she in there cooking, <laughs> and I'll be like one one morning. I was like, she could have closed the bedroom door, <laughs> but she don't care. <laughs> Because she's going to go in there uh, and let down her hair. Uh, 
She gonna go in there and wrap up with the Holy Ghost. And then it's gonna smell like something in there. It's gonna smell like an alabaster box was just broke. It's gonna smell like fire. First Kings 18 verses 24. The prophet battling the false prophets. He said the God who answers by fire, he is God. Don't run from the fire. Run to the fire. God wants to reignite his church. He wants them to understand who you are, whose you are, and where you are, and what you got going on. This whole thing, we were birthed in the fire. The first century church in Acts, that church was lit up in fire for he said and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it appeared unto all of them cloven tongues as of a fire tell somebody you need this fire you need this fire we could find out I like the Ethiopian eunuch story in Acts chapter 8 verses 25 if you look at that the Bible is talking about Philip the evangelist we need to be on fire with evangelizing we need to be on fire with baptizing folks we need to be on fire with what brings people into covenant with God constantly there's no day off in this thing when you become a believer you don't even have need to have a title to baptize somebody last time i checked the scripture matthew 28 18 and 19 jesus said all power in heaven and earth have been given unto him and then he tells you he says go ye go ye every disciple every follower of jesus christ I've initiated uh, an initiative at our ministry in Oakland. Everybody will baptize somebody this year. Everybody in the church will baptize somebody this year. And if I ain't home, just go in my backyard and baptize them right there. Just, if I ain't home, so what? Just go in there and baptize them. Tell them, Pastor gave me permission to baptize because Jesus gave all of us permission. That's why he wants his church on fire. You could come to my house at three o'clock in the morning, Pastor. Uh, you know, I've been witnessing to this sister or brother, whatever. I'm just going to go on through the backyard and baptize them. Is it all right? Go ahead. Just, you should have told me in the morning. That's all right. Don't even worry about it. Just baptize them people. Amen. Tell somebody, just baptize them. You want them baptized in fire and you want them baptized in water. Oh, tell somebody, you must be born of the water and of the spirit. All right, Jesus, will you help us right now? We're almost done. In Luke chapter 24, verse 47, Jesus was teaching and speaking, and he was saying this. Uh, he said that repentance, repentance, uh, and remission of sins. Remember, repentance is not remission. Uh -huh. yeah. So if all you did was repent and did not get baptized, uh, you running around with a bunch of sins on you. Uh, that's why your conscience is not clear. It's hard to help the pastor if you don't have a clear conscience. For the Bible tells me that baptism is an answer to a clear conscience. You would probably be more on fire if your conscience got a little more clear. Sometimes we forget what this stuff means. But when we taught them in Africa what it mean, one time they lost their mind. They out there preaching, laying hands. Now they understand. They understand the seven dispensations. They understand the difference of when the law ended, when Jesus died on the cross. And now that the church began, amen. And if you really want to know, the book of Acts actually was written before the Gospels. They don't even know the book of Acts was written before the Gospels. Powerful. That's because he started this thing in fire. 
And he wants us to continue it in fire. Ha 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 ya 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 ba It's in the order of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, so that you and I can get introduced to Jesus. And then when you get to Acts, you can't skip Acts and go to Romans. Talking about if you just confess the Lord Jesus, you'll be saved. No, 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 no. Romans was written to Christians already. You see, before you could understand Romans, you got to know that wasn't written to an unsaved person. <laughs> so what happens in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts, here come everything Jesus taught his disciples in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's now lived out in Acts. This is why you can't skip Acts in salvation. Or you won't have a fire. That's why today there's a lot of folks trying to do stuff. Ain't no fire. <laughs> they, they, they ain't no fire. <laughs> they may have had repentance, but Luke 24, 47 said repentance and remission. That means the washing away of sins in that baptism water. Unless you go on that water, unless you get in that water, you cannot get rid of your sins. They are still there. And so that can hinder you from being in fire. They on fire in Uganda. Somebody, we on fire at Lighthouse. Are you really on fire? I hope so. And if you want to head out with us to the next trip, you ain't got to fill out anything. All you got to do is buy a ticket. Amen. And we're going to make sure you well cared for and covered. And we're going to get out there at this thing called the Jesus Festival. I didn't really get to talk about it, but in July, when we went to the last Jesus Festival, my wife and I and Brother Webb and another brother, while we were there in July, they do like an urban warfare and go throughout the city, and then they launch a big service at night. And during that time, we do what's called a medical missions. You could call it that. But see, you, ain't, you don't have to be medically certified because we hired seven doctors. Tell somebody, we hired the doctors. <laughs> We hired the doctors, not nurses. Uh, we hired seven doctors uh, and had them come and they treated over 200 people with some of the best and, and provided the medicine. What I'm trying to tell you, church, is you may not have the expertise, but we'll find out who do and we'll just partner with them. Does that make sense to anybody? <laughs> Ain't no sense. So you can go if you just want to spectate. You can go if you just want to help. Uh, and in July coming up, we're doing the Jesus Festival again. <laughs> and this time I have requested that over a thousand people get treated. Uh, so that means if we got to hire 25 doctors, guess what? We're on fire! Why don't you stand with me and let's pray. Hallelujah. I need a fire choir up here right now. I need a fire somebody up here. I need somebody that ain't ran out of gas. I need somebody that they spirit don't get sleepy. I'm looking for some folks that's on fire because the altar is on fire. You're a royal priesthood. That means you can light the fire anytime you want. As a matter of fact, you ain't even supposed to let the fire go out. I need a fire choir right now. I need some worshipers right now. I need somebody up here right now that got enough fire inside of them to meet with Jesus. Why don't you come and meet him at this altar? And while you're there and while you're praying, start a fire right where you at. You are a fire starter. Father God, I pray right now as the holy flames would come down, as the fire of the Holy Ghost would baptize us, Lord. As the fire, Lord, that you have sent down would cover us. As the fire that you gave Moses is there so we can meet with you, so we can worship you so we could get to know your plans, so we could get to know your thoughts, so we could get to know your mind. God, this is a fire that cannot be quenched. It cannot be put out. God's fire is unquenchable. And so, Lord, stir up the fire in us. Stir up the fire in me, oh, Lord. Stir it up in your saints, God. Stir it up in every Christian here today. Show every minister, Lord, everybody that has the anointing on them, everyone that's anointed to baptize, everybody that's 
that's anointed uh, to teach it uh, and preach it. Uh, don't wait for anything. Uh, don't wait for anybody. Uh, there's too many lost souls out there. Uh, you got to just step out uh, and use the fire. Uh, use that fire that God has put on you. Uh, use that fire. Uh, God has put a fire on you. Uh, he's put a fire on your family. Uh, he said, I need this fire uh, to get a hold of you. Uh, so I don't want you to be worried about a thing. Uh, I want you to receive the anointing of the Lord. Uh, I want you to believe that the hand of God is all over you today. Uh, God, uh, I pray you will spark this fire. Uh, I pray you will rekindle it, God. Uh, Lord, you put a fire in her a long time ago. Uh, Lord, she's a fire starter. Uh, you don't want the fire to go out. Uh, God! Don't let my fire go out. I pray right now the fire will start. It will burn like it used to. It will burn like it used to. You'll wake up with fire. You'll wake up on the floor. You'll wake up crying out to the Lord. You'll wake up where his spirit is. You'll be like, God, will you help me, Lord? I want my fire back. We need fire fire Lord I pray a blessing of fire over this young woman oh I pray God you'll put something inside of her Lord that she would say you know what I gotta try this fire thing I've been dealing with a different kind of fire but now God has said Lord I want your fire Lord she wants your fire Lord she needs to know I pray you will teach her God I pray you will fill her and bless her right now in the name of Jesus let your anointing fall on her right now let it fall on your church God I pray I pray you will touch every soul in this place. I pray that fire will sweep through this altar. Teach her how to light the fire. Teach her how to start the fire, God. Teach her, oh Lord, how to do it. Teach her, teach her, Lord. Let the tongues come out right now. Don't be afraid. Just open your mouth. Oh, the Lord is calling you, daughter. He's calling you. He said, I'm going to show you. I'm going to be the one to help you feel satisfied within yourself. I'm the one that's going to fill up everything you may have thought was empty. But the Lord was saying the only thing that's missing out of that spot is fire. It's a place for you to come and worship me. Oh, God. Bless her, Lord, right now, Jesus. Bless her, Lord, right now. God, I bless your daughter right now, and I thank you for her, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You show me there's a fire in her that won't quit. There's a fire in her that will not stop. And the Lord is saying, I'm going to get it out of you. I'm going to use you one way or another. And he said, it's going to come a time. You're going to have to step out. You might look funny. You might look different to your friends and everybody else. But God is saying, this is what I want for you, daughter. I want you to come to the fire. I want you to come to that burning bush and let Get your hair down in the Holy Ghost uh, and give me everything. Uh, he said, I'm calling you. Uh, I want you to give me all that you are. Uh, I want you to give me your hurt. Uh, I want you to give me your successes. Uh, oh, I thank you, Jesus. Uh, Thank you for the fire, Lord. Oh, Sister Malnado, Lord. She's been burning the candle for a long time, God. And Lord, and she now will be a part of this revival. Her lineage will be a part of this revival. It cannot be stopped. It's going to burn. It cannot go out. It's a fire that cannot be quenched. God, do it right now. Do it, do it, do it, do it in her God.